When I was a kid, my mom and I lived in a somewhat sucky neighborhood in Chicago. Despite the condition of the neighborhood, the apartment complex that we lived in, however, was fantastic. Our top floor unit had a fireplace that saved our lives in the winter. For those that don't live in or haven't even visited Chicago, the Windy City is particularly icy in colder seasons, and a nice quality, considering the area, AC unit that iced out the front area of the unit in the summer, but the back area where the bedrooms were remained hotter than Satan's armpit. Because of the temperature on hot or cold days in this case, my mom and I would camp out in the living room to sleep on those nights. Anyway, despite the rough neighborhood, I remember having a good childhood in the short time that we were there. Maybe because my mom always made sure to protect me from the parts of the neighborhood that were exceptionally rough. So, on one winter night, our apartment was freezing cold. My mom told me to grab my pillows and a blanket because we were going to have a sleepover in the living room. She had popped some popcorn, made hot chocolate, one with no marshmallows for me, and one loaded with them for her. We ate and drank and watched Christmas movies before I passed out. Clearly white girl wasted on hot chocolate. At some point in the middle of the night, I woke up to go to the bathroom and I saw movement in the kitchen. I don't know if it was because I was stupid tired or oblivious to what was going on, but I called out for my mom, even though she was asleep on the couch right next to me. The person, who I soon realized was a guy because of his huge stature and lack of hair under the mask he wore, walked over and crouched down to eye level in front of me and whispered, Shh. I simply shrugged and I went to the bathroom and came back to the living room to go to sleep. And that was that. The guy was no longer there and the door was left slightly ajar. I chalked it up to one of those lucid dreams and I filed it away in my repressed memories. I do, however, remember moving the next day into my grandparents' place for about a month until we found something. But because I was so young, my mom never told me why. Not until I was grown at least. The topic of the apartment randomly came up in conversation, and I offhandedly told her about the dream that I remember that I had. This is the terrifying conversation that ensued. Did I ever tell you about the weird dream that I had? No, I don't think so. What dream? After I told her, she went to pale as a ghost. Now, my mother is a tough woman and she doesn't mess around. So, seeing her go pale scared the heck out of me. That wasn't a dream. That really happened. Now it was my turn to go pale. I felt my stomach fall to the floor. And I stared at her like, Speak, go on, why are you silent? I woke up in the middle of the night in this. This man was standing above me staring. I remember immediately demanding, Where is my child? Where is my child? I tried to get up but he growled. Yes, growled and then whispered angrily, Don't move. At this, I start tearing up. I saw the fear in her eyes. The utter terror of thinking something had happened to her only child. I hated seeing my mom so upset. It's been just us practically all my life. So to imagine her having to move herself and a young girl out of a neighborhood from sheer terror is hard to say the least. My mom continued. The man just kept staring at me. But then he rushed out of the apartment when he heard you flush the toilet and left everything that he was going to steal. The next morning, I packed up our stuff and we went to live with Nana and Papa. Child, I left all the furniture, plates, silverware, TV, everything. Just got our clothes and got the heck out of Dodge. But because we vacated the lease, it kind of messed up my credit. But I couldn't imagine sleeping in that place another night. We just sat there in silence, freaking out because of my dream. Which happened to actually not be a dream, it was all too real. I would say it was simply a drug addict trying to make off with some stuff. But why walk up to a child and tell her to be quiet instead of just leaving with what you had already packed? Why stare at a woman, make her lie still in place, 
and then leave when the kid comes out of the bathroom. And just why? This all started when I was probably around the age of nine in the summertime. My brother was a year younger than me, and long story short, he convinced me to go look for some cats that he had seen. I put my shoes on and followed my little brother out the door. We walked the streets in search of the kittens, completely unsupervised. We lived in a small town and my mom worked at a pizza king until 9pm every weekday. My dad worked until midnight at Johnson Controls. That left our older sister, 13, to supervise, but she was always off doing god knows what. Because of these circumstances, I realized later we were perfect targets. Predictable schedules, lack of supervision, and comfortable in our tight-knit Midwestern neighborhood. My brother led me about six blocks away when someone called out to us. I turned my head to find four young men leaning up against an old gray two-door beater. They were standing outside of a known drug house, and they were smoking cigarettes, seemingly minding their own business. The one who called out to us closer to the passenger seat asked us, You guys want some gum? I stopped dead in my tracks and my brother looked confused. They offered us gum? It was eerily reminiscent of our yearly Stranger Danger assemblies in the school auditorium. My brother and I looked at them for a second, but then turned around and started walking back the way that we had came, saying nothing. They yelled at us to stop and we turned our heads and saw the driver quickly getting into his car, and the passenger pulling the seat up to let the other two in the back. As the engine started, we ran. We ran through the yard of a man whose lawn was always way overgrown. We tried to crouch low and lose them, but that loud engine of that old beater was getting closer. It didn't occur to me that they could see the grass moving as we crawled through. We got up this time and we ran at full speed weaving in and out of people's yards to try and buy us some time. They followed. When I realized that there was no one running a car, we took a straight line to one of our neighbor's houses and started beating on their back door. The car sped out from around the corner and stopped abruptly in the driveway, so we abandoned that idea and we jumped over her fence. We eventually made it back to her house and we thought that we had lost them. My mom's voice startled me from behind. Where have you been? Where is your sister? I think she had come home because she was on a delivery route that day. Sometimes when someone messed up a pizza, the owners would let my mom take it home to us if she was on delivery, so that we had something to eat when the pantry was empty. I started to tell my mom what had happened, and she didn't look like she was too keen on buying the story, until I stopped mid-sentence at the sound of a sputtering engine. I looked outside and the four men drove past our house slowly, looking in our windows, making eye contact and giving us a menacing look. My mom saw the men, tried to close the blinds, the track was broken but failed, and told us to stay inside for the rest of the day. She left after that. I can't explain why, so don't ask, she just did. Later that night, still no sign of her sister, and we were hungry. We made some mac and cheese and put on Hannah Montana to get our minds off of things. Laughing at scenes that weren't funny, my nerves started to settle a bit. However, I kept seeing this tiny red light in the corner of my eyes coming from the window. I kept brushing it off, it could have been anything. After some time, I finally stood up and I went over to the window to investigate. I saw that this red dot was actually the light to a video camera. I gasped at the sight of this, and he ran away immediately, towards another man illuminated by a street lamp down the road. Naturally, I panicked and I cried. I ran outside and I screamed my sister's name as loud as I could, and I ran back inside. I called 911 first, and then my mom, and told them that there were two men with what I thought was a video camera outside on the street. The police showed up after circling the area and said that they would stake out for a couple of hours at the house in the corner, but that the man would probably be long gone. They never found the man, but the man found us over and over again. A couple of years later, my brother had the neighbor kid over for a sleepover. 
We all hung out in his room until late at night, laughing loudly and shooting BB guns at the ceiling and each other. I left the room and when I came back, my brother had told me that a hand had slapped the window and slid down like in a horror film. I thought he was just trying to scare me, and I still believed that he was probably lying. I was in the middle of telling him that he was full of crap, when I saw that little red dot again silencing all of us. We ducked to the floor at first, silent, unbreathing, and then my brother crawled over and turned off the light. We stayed there for a long time until waking our parents up, but they found nothing. I passed it off as a prank. Another couple of years later, in an insomniac-induced all-nighter, I was sitting in our sunroom, with big windows all around and no curtains except for one to my right, reading a book. It was about 3 in the morning and the whole house was asleep. I had my headphones in, listening to my mp3 player, when I thought I heard a loud noise over the music. I looked up, startled, and saw a man at the door watching me, at 3 in the morning. This is the closest that I had ever been to him. I froze and stared. He was about 6 feet tall and his hair was long and wavy over his eyebrows. It kind of looked like bangs, or a comb over without enough gel. He was wearing a white hoodie and long blue pants that nearly covered his shoes. He looked like the aged version of the guy who offered us a piece of gum years before, and he had a blue digital camera in his hand down to his side. He walked away casually, without fear or haste, maintaining eye contact, and I followed him with my eyes, past the windows, and behind the only window that was concealed with blinds out of my line of sight. I ran inside and I told no one. I passed it off as a sleep-deprived hallucination for months, denying the nightmares and the cold chills, before I finally came to the realization that this was the man that I had seen years before. And I remembered something. That door's lock was broken. Those weren't the only times we caught someone outside of our windows. It happened for years and it became an odd fact of life, but he seemed to be less interested the older that I grew. It's strange because he always purposefully reveals his presence instead of trying to stay discreet. And he even showed his face to me that one night. It makes me wonder what kind of pictures and videos he captured. And how long he would have watched me before making himself known to us. I used to convince myself that these were several unrelated instances. Because it scared me more to think that one person had the capacity to invest that much time into us. It seemed like an odd revenge for outrunning him years before. If you're reading this, you are the reason that I keep my blinds closed and can never own a houseplant or a sunroom. Creepy cameraman. Please leave me alone. Back when I was in 6th grade, I had a close-knit group of friends. There were four of us and we were all girls and we hung out all the time. Sleepovers were a norm for us and we would usually rotate houses, seeing as all of our parents knew each other and we all lived relatively close to each other, the farthest being away 10 minutes. One particular sleepover, we were at my friend Caitlin's house and two of her cousins just happened to also be sleeping over. Caitlin had two older sisters and an older brother that were all really nice and friendly. And during our sleepovers, they usually just stayed in their rooms and only came out for food, so we never really felt like we were imposing on them. Her brother would let us play with his PS2 sometimes, and her sisters would talk to us about boys in high school gossip, which at the time we thought was really cool. Overall, Caitlin had a great relationship with her siblings. I couldn't say the same for her cousins, though. One of her cousins was in 8th grade, and she was closer in age to one of Caitlin's older sisters, who was a freshman in high school, so she was staying in her room. The other one was a boy who was a junior in high school, and naturally stayed with Caitlin's brother. The girl was nice even if she seemed a bit shy. The guy, however, just gave me the creeps. He was definitely more outgoing, but something about his mannerisms were strange and when he smiled... It looked like he was smiling at something he thought of in his head, and not necessarily at you. He had shoulder length, stringy and greasy dirty blonde hair, 
and he was pretty scrawny for a guy his age. He looked like he could be a freshman in high school. Caitlin seemed really uncomfortable around him. Later on, when we were in Caitlin's room, she told us that she just recently met her cousins because their mom and her mom had a falling out for a few years, and they weren't talking to each other. They'd recently reconnected, and so they thought it would be a good idea if Caitlin's aunt and her children came to visit for a weekend. Caitlin said that her female cousin was nice enough, but that she thought the guy was weird. Ever since he had got to their house, he had been trying to hang out with her instead of her brother. He would go into her room and go through her toys and books to try to make conversation with her. He was also kind of touchy. He would pet her cheeks and her hair. And when she would flinch and move away from him, he would get this really cold look in his eyes and would stare at her for a few seconds, before smiling that creepy smile that he does. We all agreed that it was really weird, but eventually we moved on to other things and talked about the usual stuff 6th graders talk about. We ended up watching a movie before bed, and took our turns to go to the bathroom in the hallway that Caitlin shared with one of her sisters. The oldest one had a bathroom in her room, and to brush their teeth. Everyone called dibs on their turn, and since I really didn't care, I was the last one to go. When my friend Lucia came back and told me that she was done, I was relieved because I was getting antsy and tired, and I just wanted to brush my teeth and go to bed and kind of gossip until we fell asleep. I walked down the hallway and opened the door to the bathroom. I was so distracted that I didn't notice Caitlin's cousin in the bathroom until I turned the lights on. I quickly apologized and I closed the door. At that point, I wanted to just leave and run back to the room. He was in the freaking bathroom with the lights off. From what I could see before I shut the door, he was just sitting on top of the closed toilet. Before I could leave, he opened the door, smiled at me, and told me to go on ahead. I really didn't care about brushing my teeth at that point, but I didn't want to run away and provoke a reaction out of him. I entered the bathroom and immediately locked the door behind me. I quickly brushed my teeth and I did my business. This is when things get really creepy for me. I opened the door and he was still there, waiting, with a smile on his face. Let me walk you back to your room. I didn't even know what to say to that. He took my silence as a yes, I guess, because before I knew it, he grabbed my right hand and was walking me back to Caitlin's room. His hand was really warm and sweaty, even though he didn't look like he was sweating or even remotely warm. I felt so numb and I could hear my own breathing. I honestly felt like I was going to pass out. I swear that hallway has never felt so long. When I got to the room, he let go of my hand and said goodnight, going back to the bedroom that he was staying in, which we had passed before we got to Caitlin's room. I walked back inside and I guess I was making a face because my friends all came up to me and asked me what was wrong. I told them what had happened, and they all agreed that it was super weird, and Caitlin said that she would talk to her mom in the morning. I hope that it all ended there, but it didn't. As a rule, we weren't allowed to lock doors during sleepovers. It's usually fine, but not in this instance. I do have been sleeping for a few hours when Caitlin was shaking me to wake up. Apparently, she had been up for a while, and with me being the closest to her, I was the first one that she ran to. She then told me, with her voice shaking, that her cousin had opened the door to the room twice, to her knowledge and would stare in the room for almost a full minute before quietly closing the door. I was really frightened when I heard this. He was just watching us sleep throughout the night. I agreed to jump in Caitlin's bed with her and waited. It didn't even take that long when I heard the door open. We both just froze and stared straight at the door. There was no light in the hallway and the only source of light in that room was from the moon outside but we could still see a silhouette of someone's head peeking through the door. We could feel his eyes on us, and he was just staring into the darkness of Caitlin's room for a few seconds. We were trying not to move so that he didn't know that we were awake, but it didn't matter. He let some air out of his nose as if he was trying not to laugh. Hey, Caitlin. 
he whispered and then just closed the door. Kay then looked like she wanted to cry. She grabbed onto me and we just held each other and waited until we decided to come back. Me never did end up coming back. I guess it wasn't as fun since he knew that we were awake. We never ended up going back to sleep that night though. The next morning, my mom came to get me pretty early and I said my goodbyes. I was glad Caitlin's cousin was still asleep. When I saw Caitlin in school, I asked her what had happened when I left. She said that she told her mom and that her mom was really concerned and said that she would talk to their aunt. I guess she told my mom about what had happened to me too because she asked me about it later on and was trying to see if anything else had happened to me. After that, she made sure that Caitlin's cousins were not around before allowing me to sleep over at their place. She didn't have to worry though because they never came back to visit after that. I don't know if Caitlin's mom had another falling out with her sister or if she just never invited them back to her house. But Caitlin's creepy cousin, please let's not meet again.